Video games have the luxury of using the already established language of film to enhance them, so they should be using the best of it, right? Of course, but much of what I enjoy about movies doesn't often make its way into my favorite games, which is a bummer. I think this is one reason I was so pleasantly surprised by Red Dead Redemption 2's Chapter 2 mission, A Quiet Time. It's one of the first missions in the game that doesn't result in some sort of shootout and instead tells the story of a wild night at the saloon. It's a relatively unimportant mission in the overall scope of the game, and it doesn't really move the story forward in any meaningful way. But I loved this mission. I loved it so much that I ventured over to youtube.com to watch other people play it, and they all seemed to enjoy it just as much as I did. And most of the love for this mission seems to come from one moment. A moment that made me do something I don't think I've ever done while playing a video game by myself. I laughed. And I don't mean that I exhaled through my nose or nodded my head in amusement. I actually laughed aloud, completely alone in my apartment. Maybe that's a normal thing for most people to do, but for me, that is totally abnormal. So instead of continuing my playthrough, I found myself stuck asking one important question. Why Cowboy Game Make Man Laugh? Sigmund Freud actually answered this question in 1905 with his examination of humor through the relief theory. Basically, the relief theory says that when we expect a stressful situation, we build up energy to deal with the situation. But when the situation is resolved without us outputting that energy, we laugh in relief. So I want to examine how Red Dead's developers set up expectations and then provide comedic relief in a quiet time. At the start of the mission, Arthur is tasked with taking Lenny into Valentine to help get his mind off things. Only a few hours earlier in the game, Arthur made a pretty big scene at the saloon and almost killed a man. So Arthur and Dutch both established that it'd be best to keep a low profile this time around. Arthur's conversation with Lenny on the way into town highlights this. We'll just have a cup, settle you down, then head back, okay? Okay. I think most players at this point are guessing that something is going to happen to disrupt the plan of keeping a low profile. This probably wouldn't be a mission otherwise. So as Arthur and Linny are talking at the bar and a man rudely interrupts, you expect to see things go off the rails fairly quickly, but they don't. Arthur deals with this man in one way or another and you continue with the mission. Now, instead of continuing the mission in real time, like pretty much every other mission, there's a brief montage of Arthur and Lenny throwing back drinks. Just with this montage, there's already a bit of a departure from the normal mission structure that Red Dead uses. The montage then breaks, and Arthur realizes he's lost track of Lenny. And when I played this, I assumed I would find Lenny in some sort of predicament that I'd need to deal with. But this brief concern is just set up for the relief you feel when you find him upstairs. This setup and relief isn't supposed to be funny, but it helps build the energy for what comes next. Arthur and Linny talk briefly, and there's another small setup and relief when Linny asks Arthur why he never married. Why you never marry? Now the conversation feels like it may be moving in another direction, but before you get the chance to really consider the new direction, the shot cuts away. That's the thing you see, is it? So there's another short montage, and you're back in control of Arthur. Lenny is lost once again, but you quickly hear commotion coming from the bar, and here it is. Here's where the mission diverts. You walk down the stairs and attempt to stop whatever misunderstanding is taking place. You exchange words and then push one of the men. The music stops with a piano clank and you're setting up for something bad to happen. But instead... Shut up, mister! Yeah! Shut your mouth, mister! <laughs> I cannot think of another video game, or even movie honestly, that has ever made me laugh with a cut like that. And after a few rewatches, I think there are three things that make this moment work so well. First we have the smash cut. Out of all modern movie directors, Edgar Wright probably uses the smash cut for comedy most often and most effectively. Here, Wright uses the smash cut to move away from a chaotic and stressful situation to show relief and shock. 
complaints of experienced headaches and nausea and develop symptoms similar to those displayed by their attackers. If you know someone who has been... And this cut has been used before in video games. The 2012 game 30 Flights of Loving is pretty much entirely made of smash cuts, moving from one hectic situation to another, then to a calm one, and then back to chaos. I think the smash cut in this scene from Red Dead is probably the most important element of the editing for this sequence. I mean, the smash cut is basically the relief theory worked into an editing technique. And the other two elements I want to highlight mostly just work to enhance the smash cut. Second, we have the whip pan. Also frequently used in Edgar Wright films, the whip pan serves as a transition from scene to scene, or to connect two ideas for a joke. It yanks the attention away from what's happening and presents another image to give our attention to. I think the whip pan in this scene works so well because when we see the camera begin to move away from the potential fight, we're looking to connect the next shot with the one we were just pulled away from, and it just doesn't give us the outcome we're expecting. A normal cut with no camera movement here wouldn't give us the same erratic energy. What? I said what did you say? Get lost, buddy. Shut up, mister! Yeah! Shut your mouth, mister. Without the whip hand, it may still be funny, but not quite as funny. And thirdly, we have the music. The transition from music to no music, and then to the peak of the song, does so much to sell the smash cut and the change in mood. Matching up the reveal of the whip pan, the music cuts back in more bombastic and whimsical than before, with a mouth harp as the cherry on top of an absurdly joyful moment. Without the music cues hitting like they do, the scene loses a lot of its natural energy. Like I said before, the scene isn't very significant to the overall narrative of the game, but I think it's an interesting example of how filmmaking tools can be used by game makers in tandem with what makes games interesting on their own to create moments that stand out. Most cuts connect two ideas in real time, a line of dialogue to a reaction shot to that dialogue, but more creative cuts like this do so much to deliver the punch that's set up by good writing, and I'd love to see more of this in the AAA scene. Red Dead 2 has plenty of moments that people consider cinematic. They literally recreated this train heist scene from the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford, shot for shot. The Housers were most definitely concerned with creating a cinematic experience for players, but video games don't need to be gritty, dark, and serious to be cinematic. Sometimes all it takes is some drunk cowboys, a mouth harp, and a clever edit. <laughs>